The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. All right, Hi guys. What's going on, man? How are you? Yeah, not bad. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Of course, of course. Do we have who else do we have jumping up? Do we have uh Gombat joining you as well? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Okay. Gombat, what's going on? You guys want to uh quickly introduce yourselves for those that, that don't that aren't familiar with uh, some of the Xano team? Yeah, sure. Oh, sounds like we can't hear you, Gombat. Or is that just me? Oh yeah, Gombat, I don't hear you. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, can you hear us? Yeah, go ahead, guys. You guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, yeah. Mm, once again, thank you for, very much for the invitation. My name is Val. I may be more known by handle CryptoSoul. I'm lead researcher at Xeno. I'm author of the Zircanum technology together with Kovi, the researcher and developer from Monero team. We we have a, a paper and presentation at Monero Topia in 2023 and then in, at Monero Con. So we uh, like, I, I really excited to be here and it's not the first time that uh, we we're talking with Douglas. So yeah. Yes, they, 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 you know, thank you so much guys for, uh, sponsoring Monerotopia again you 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 supported us last year and that was fantastic um i think that that was kind of um a a, a little bit of a breakthrough moment for xano i feel because it was it was a chance for everybody to really get to to meet the some of the people behind the project um there was a lot of anticipation with meeting andre who we've talked about quite a bit on this show andre's uh, the basically the the first developer to work on crypto note no, to create the first implementation of of, of crypto note uh, he went on to eventually uh, build uh, be one of the founders of Xano so he's obviously part part of the team so there was a lot of anticipation there with the first Monerotopia and you guys all did a fantastic job there there was some uh, amazing you. talks that took place amazing panels and I think you walked away from that that conference with uh, earning the respect of a lot of the Monero community because you you guys were so so open in, in how you talked about your tech and it wasn't wasn't about shilling things it was you guys are just coming there to present present ideas and more importantly not just ideas uh, actual working functional code uh, that's that's been shipped that's working uh, and with with the help of some Monero devs as well right Co uh, helped work on uh, Zarkanian with you. And I think that was kind of news to a lot of people that were at Monerotopia. So that was amazing and really appreciate the fact that you guys are participating again this year. It's, it's, it's working out nicely. So thank you. Thank yeah. You. We yeah. yeah. C can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can gone back. Go ahead uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. for those that don't know you. Most, okay, most so people yeah, here I, at Monerotopia should know you. You're, you were a Monerotopia <laughs> guest before you were a Xano team member. Well, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm Gonzalo. I'm now the community manager at Sano. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm so looking forward to come to Wonderotopia again. Uh, last year was amazing. So, yeah. I think one of the most surprising things about Monerotopia is, is me realizing how tall uh, Gombat is in person. <laughs> <laughs> Video just doesn't do like you, you have no idea. And then you show up, you're like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <it's... laughs> Uh, super excited to see you're coming to Monero Topia too, right, man? Are, 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 yeah. are you anyway? Are you yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so we'll have a, how many, how many people from Xano are we going to have there? Do we know? Um, I think the whole team. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So four. Amazing. <laughs> fantastic. Um, so yeah, let's, let's break into it a little bit. Uh, what is, what, what is going on with Xano? Obviously the price is going up. People are very <laughs> excited about that. Um, 
you know, we, we, we like to not keep things focused on price. Uh, give it, give us, tell us the things, yeah, that people, some... the things people should be excited about with regards yeah, to so, that. Sometimes it's uh, <laughs> a bit hard to ignore, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I mean, we have doing great. I mean, I think it's just the people looking forward uh, to what's going on in Sano. I mean, we are really close to the launch of a confidential layer, for example, which will allow uh, Sano to be breached, uh, trustlessly breached over to Ethereum and other blockchains, as well as other blockchains to Sano. Um, and yeah, we also got a Cake Wallet integration, you know, coming really soon. So, so yeah, I mean, lots of exciting stuff coming. Um, do we know? Do we know when we're launch when it's launching on Cake? Tux, can you give us any any insight there? Soon, pretty soon. Uh, PRs are being reviewed right now, and Xano's the the next. It is the next. There's a lot of there's PRs for other stuff that are people want to add, but Xano is the next coin that we are adding to Cake. So within the next month or so, two, I'd say for sure. Yeah, we're, right. we are yeah. really very excited. Yeah. Maybe maybe, awesome. maybe it could coincide with an announcement at Monerotopia, right? Maybe we could uh, it could be launched during Monerotopia. Tuck, see if you can, if you can arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> Day one launch will be on Monero at Monerotopia. <laughs> Santa and Cable. That'd be very 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 cool. What are what are some of the other things that that are going on? I see you guys. I think being listed on more exchanges, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Tell tell us more. Tell us more. I think that. I'm seeing a, I'm yeah, seeing a mean, lot of this, tweets, a lot of Zano tweets. This week we got uh, lots of integrations uh, with some instance changes like Orange Friend, uh, and we got listed in a new pool, and also there's also some new uh, fiat on ramps, which people have me asking a lot, um, and there's more coming. <laughs> what are some of the what do, you, what do you think are some of the best ways for people to obtain Zano? I guess obviously depends on where you are. Um, like, what is your recommendation to people who are like, well, how do I get some? Yeah, right now, uh, the exchange with the most liquidity is MEXC. Uh, and it's no KOC. So, you know, uh, you can just enter by fiat or by buying something like Litecoin if it's um, it, that's available pretty much everywhere. So just deposit something like Litecoin, I change it to Sano. Um, Excelix, you're talking yeah. about? Like which MX, exchange? which exchange? I'm sorry, uh, I I... MX, MXC. <laughs> it's oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're also looking forward to get integrated into the central exchange, uh, like Basic Swap and CRI. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, uh, build some bridges with Monero as well. It'll be great. So is Mexi Mexi is an actual like exchange similar to like Binance or Coinbase, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's no go you see, I think. I see. If not, there's always Stray Dog, which is a hundred percent no go you see. So that's an option too. Yeah, I was about to mention Doug. Yeah, I did just get uh Xano from Exolix. Yeah, Exolix. Uh, like option. Exolix, yep. It's pretty nice. Yeah, we're we're also on, on Trocolor. So yeah, I think that's that one is really nice. Yeah, that's definitely popular among the among the Monero community for sure. Yeah, uh, um, fantastic. So that's that's beautiful to see. Tell, tell tell us more, man. What are some of the other um, other integrations? Um, yeah, I think just the biggest one is confidential layer. Um, I think the you know as Roger Bear says. Um, tokens you know were the most uh obviously tokens no one can deny that their usefulness right now especially with stable coins uh but you know they can't quite reach uh mainstream adoption and i think that's because of a uh, lack of privacy i mean mm -hmm. a, a store owner doesn't want their customers to know how much they're holding um so i think that once uh you know we unlock that um it will gain quite a bit of traction. Uh, guys, send send your questions using xmrchat.com slash Monero Talk as super chats if you can. Obviously, greatly appreciate it. So we can 
get that going. Uh, but I will take some of these questions. Uh, this this is obviously a doozy. Is Zano going to implement full chain membership proof? Mm-hmm. So obviously we're waiting for uh, Monero to do so. Luke is is working on the full chain membership proof implementation for Monero. Uh, I guess the idea is if it could be implemented in Monero, it could be implemented in Zano. They're both crypto note protocols. Uh, yeah, what it, what is the current take? Yeah, we are on. watching watching closely at what uh, what guys do with the full chain membership. By the way, I would like to congrats uh, Luke Parker and Justin Berman and other members of Monero, Monero Switch Lab, and Monero team uh, who is participating with this great project because it is uh, it's a big achievement. And uh, yeah, we are we are watching clo- closely uh, and. Uh, the most uh, most interesting part for us would be uh, to to understand how uh, this could be connected and to connected together with the confidential assets and with the account technology because this is a, now it's a basic technology of Zano, so we 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 need to 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 respect it, and of course we we would love to one day to to integrate it and uh, but it's still a long way to to do it but we for sure we uh, we will be watching closely and even more closely i i suppose at monerotopia probably we will hear more from luke because i i saw him on the on speakers list uh so yeah they, this is very very exciting so, so this, you'll, you'll be you'll be picking Luke's brain at, at Monerotopia, trying to figure out how how do we implement it <laughs> into Zana for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, like uh, last year when we first met at Monerotopia, uh, and like we first first heard about the the full chain membership proof technology, it was on very early stage, and mm-hmm. I personally didn't believe at that moment that like it it would be possible in a like nearest uh, couple of years yeah uh, but but now yeah we see we see a great advancement and yeah that that is that is an achievement so like yeah as as i said before uh yeah zano zano and, and monero uh, similar in from coding from mathematical perspective but but in zano we have a proof of pose uh consensus um, and proof of stake and proof. So I'm sorry, proof of stake and proof of work uh, consensus, uh, Hebrew consensus, and uh, we have uh, Zarkanum and we have confidential assets. That's like uh, for us, it it was very very difficult and mathematical mathematically challenging to to implement and to to join together this technology and. Uh, yeah, maybe the the biggest challenge for us would be to to preserve these technologies when implementing a full chain membership proof. Yeah, and this is yeah. Is, this there, is, is, there a, any, is there any easy way to try to explain what that complication would be? Like, what what is the difficulty of plugging in full chain membership proofs into the system that you guys are currently running there with confidential assets and your your P, proof of work slash proof of stake hybrid system? Well, I, I try uh, to be not to not go into deep technology yeah. technical details because, like, I I can I I saw it like when when I see my video from the last conference it was, <laughs> was too technical. Yeah, I suppose. No, uh, it's good, man. It's good. Get get it out there. The the technical people will pick it up, and the rest of us snormies will. We'll pick up yeah, something. I like I me personally <laughs> technical person. So uh, for me, it's uh, the most difficult is to like to understand what what words you you need to, like to explain. Yeah. So I uh, yeah I'll, I'll try. I'll do my best. Uh, so so in Zano we we have uh, the similar approach for mathematical approach for uh, that is used to hide amounts. Uh, the the same approach that that is used in Monero. It is purchasing commitments so you don't have an amount that is stated explicitly you have a special mathematical thing that is uh, that is in your amount is hidden in like b- burn in into this mathematical thing and on top of this in Zeno we also have 
few more uh, person commitments that is needed to facilitate uh, this anonymous proof of stake. And after that, we have even more like m more more things like that to to make like to allow confidential assets work because uh, our goal was when when we developing confidential assets, our goal was to make uh, unified anonymity pool for all, all outputs. So for instance, uh, like we're still using, of course, uh, as a Monero, we're still using uh, UTXO model when you have an outputs of each transactions and like when you, you would like to spend your outputs, you need to find these unspent outputs that you have previously and uh, mix it with uh, uh, like foreign outputs from the blockchain and uh, this is called the mixing or using a decoys and we uh, we have uh, like it's challenging to 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 connect all these pieces uh, pieces together because I know that for, for Monero team it wasn't uh, like an easy uh, journey and still it's ongoing research and ongoing development uh, on the full chain membership proofs and like because of these complications we, we probably have more things to be done and also I'm not sure about the Rust implementation that uh, actually included in this card minor full chain membership proof approach because like our team is C++ uh, C++ uh, yeah. uh, only so we like kind of boomers here <laughs> so yeah I heard the conversation before <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah so so right uh, yeah from programmers perspective yeah we are like me andrew and we we kind of boomers and we we stick to like old-fashioned technology that is time time proved so i'm not sure about uh, whether we switch to rust like on part of our code it, it's like i i will be thinking over it so, are but, you... but anyway yeah go ahead you have a thought there no no sorry Okay, are, are you guys? Um, what does development currently look like? Obviously, so you're you're the, you're the main researcher. Um, you've had co contributing at some point with Zarcanium. Obviously, you have Andre, who's the the super crypto note coder from from, you know. So he's 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 obviously doing a, a large uh, the lion's share of development. I imagine in terms of with the protocol itself. Are are you seeing other developers starting to contribute to Xano? Yeah, actually, we uh, we hired like this this week. We hired another developer to our team. It's a C plus uh, plus guy that it will be contributing. He is already contributing to our <clears throat> automated testing system, and we hope that uh, we we like our team will be growing uh, in terms of development. And yeah, we have we have a like quite a long uh, backlog of tasks we have uh, lots of stuff to be to be uh, to be done because uh, when when we implement in the confidential assets and uh, and zero count, uh, many like more less important things uh, were postponed and now it's more like time to 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 implement them and also we as as gone with fire i already told that uh, confidential layer is is very important thing for us uh to to do it like and it, it requires some effort from coding perspective as well and for instance uh i'm working on allowing confidential assets to be controlled and like emitted and deployed by a third party who is owning uh, ethereum signature and ethereum public key so that that is one one of the one of the stone that that is necessary to implement and to make confidential assets more more widely adopted by services that will be using zano in the future fantastic fantastic
We got uh, this. This is a tough question, or you know, one that you guys may not like answering, but I think one that you you should should fully answer to kind of earn earn the trust of the community here. People are asking about uh, the pre mine. If it hasn't been covered, what percent of the pre mine was sold by the dev team to date? So just I guess just maybe just talk about the pre mine in general, it's just so people have an idea of what um, you know what the pre mine is all about. Yeah, I answered it below. Um, right now, uh, at this day, um, taking into account what has already been used for development, uh, the premium just sits at around 6% of the sano supply. So I think it's reasonable. Um, and, you know, um, to me, the most important thing about this is that uh, this way of funding uh, has allowed us to keep uh, the, the core team just full time in development for like over 10 years. So, um, so yeah, I mean, when yeah, you say the pre, pre, pre my, the pre mine fund currently sits at just, so obviously that, that percentage is going to go down over time because the supply keeps going up. Total supply keeps going up and the pre mine was a fixed amount. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, you know, we're, completely transparent about it. You can just uh, plug the auditable wallet about our, our fund and just track the progress on it. Um, and yeah, we're very open. And, you know, I just link it uh, to docs as well. So people can read more about it if they're interested. Okay, very cool. There's about 800, 800 coins, 800,000 Xano coins left in the dev fund. You can track it live. By yep. its tracking key. Okay. Um, this question is coming in from Toby's mother, tip 50 cents. What are the benefits of deflation and inflation of the coin supply during different network events? And it, is it automated? Um, um, from a monetary per perspective, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know what he's referring to? Uh, Yeah, I want to take on this one. Well, what do you guys think? Is is the question make sense? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I think uh, it's just more attractive uh, to people who hold coins to you know to have it deflationary. And the way deflation in Santa works is that all the fees are burned. So the more people use Sano, um, you know, the, the more, the, the faster the supply shrinks. Um, that's attractive from an investor perspective. And it doesn't yeah, so really... You, you, you guys want to explain, so for people that don't understand, so explain, you know, Xano's coin supply and how it fluctuates in... Yeah, you know, I, can, I can explain from technical perspective. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but no, not from from monetary perspective, from economical perspective. Like it's uh, not not easy topic for for me. But from technical perspective, it's pretty easy because like a, each block uh, of Zana or whatever type it is, proof of stake or proof of work, we have like a hybrid consensus. So we have 50, 50, 50, 50 percent of each type of block is rewarded by one Zana coin, native coin, and uh, uh, also, like when when you send a transaction, you you need to pay a fee, and now fee is so uh, one uh, hundredths, one one hundredths, zero point zero one uh, of uh, Zana coin, and uh, we at some point we decided that we will be uh, burn these fees instead of backing it back to the miners. So. Basically, if, uh, for instance, we have a like 100 transaction per block, the way will be deflationary because so total total su supply will be decreasing. Um, and uh, but now it's it's increasing with like with a steady steady pace. It's not not very fast. One uh one uh, coin per block it is 1440 coins per day roughly so yeah so yeah it 
like from technical perspective, there's no no big difference whether we burn in the fees or we return in the fees, paying the fees back to miners. Uh, but from monitor perspective, where there, I, I believe there there is difference, and so, but but I can't actually comment on like more on economical things. Okay, okay. Um, Gambat, maybe that's a good one for you. What what other projects are doing things similar to Zano in terms of having private confidential? assets kind of like a private ethereum what are what is the competition out there obviously we know darkfi is working on things but they don't exist yet tari has been working yeah. on things for for a very long time that that <laughs> seem to overlap with xano bit but once again they're they haven't they haven't actually launched yet um yeah what, how, what is the landscape out there of other projects that are doing kind of similar things in terms of private confidential assets yeah, we also got Viral, which will be a Monerotopia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if they already launched that, but I believe we work with them to uh, sort of maintain and standard between all assets, right? Um, and yeah, I think that the main differentiator of Sano is that it's based on CryptoNote. Um, people just know that CryptoNote works. Uh, Monero is based on CryptoNote and it's been around for almost 10 years and um, you know the, the darknet trusted uh you know it's just trust uh we know it works it's not like you know obviously uh new tech you know allows you to do some new features but um from uh you know in the privacy sphere um people will prioritize the, the text that is most battle tested and that is crypto node and so sano leverages um, I think that's what makes it attractive. Yeah, I would like else to add that uh, Zano is obviously is not the first project that uh, is like talking implementing confidential assets. Uh, it's not our, our invitation uh, in, in invention. And I, as I as I said on my on my talk at MoneroCon this year that uh, this work uh, i believe started by uh, andrew paelstra adam beck uh, and team back in 2017 so this i believe this uh, people from blockstream uh, blockstream company and there are else like lots lots of effort uh, put uh, into this direction were already put in this direction also uh, uh, Firo project is uh, working on this, and we we actually had a very very nice talk on spots and the confidential assets uh, and non fungible tokens by by Arn Freight and Ram Jovanian. And so I uh, I, I would like to, I, I'd like to to add that um, uh, to me it looks like this is the interesting topic, and lots of people are trying to investigate it and trying to implement it. So. Uh, Zano is just like one of all the projects who, who is working on it. And we like we all implemented and it, it is live. So everyone who is interested in this technology can download the documentation, use our RPCs and interact with our wallets and like deploy uh, his or her own uh, confidential tokens, the confidential assets like right at that moment. And it's very cheap. So, and it, it also it, it is very like anonymity is the same. All the confidential tokens have the same anonymity that Zano native coins has. So there are no difference. Yeah, all confidential assets contribute to the same uh, anonymity set as yeah, the, the same token. anonymity pool. Yeah, yeah. Humble one tip fifty cents shout out shout out to the Zano team, Monero Talk, and Cake Wallet for sponsoring the guest segment. Yeah, definitely for sure. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, would it make sense to experiment with using confidential assets for like doing the ticketing for Monerotopia? I was just thinking about that. That just kind of like popped into my head as a thought. Uh, what like what, what would that achieve? I mean, it would just be kind of a a cool thing to do. It wouldn't it wouldn't really add any utility. There would be no like, I guess yeah, like 
maybe it could work with the uh, VIP tickets. And so, you know, people can resell it and it will be a market for it and it will all right, stay right, right. private. Right. It could be right. fun. People could swap their tickets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that's the thing. I mean, uh, in Sano, uh, confidential assets are, are not just, uh, we have a whole ecosystem for them. Uh, there's also Sano trade. And so it's a way to, you know, like uh, current decentralized exchanges uh, put privacy on the back seat. Um, but Sano trade, you know, it just looks like a normal transaction. And so I think that will be really appealing, especially when we get the bridge to Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's because when trades stay private, you don't have to deal with any kind of, you know, like uh, MAB attacks, for example, or just, you know, rebuilding your balance or anything. I think that will be very attractive. Um, are we seeing anybody use the the escrow software you guys have or our features you have built into Xano natively? I always thought that that was that's a very cool feature. Yeah, escrow um, like it's it's a, like a story about the the escrow feature that uh, probably we, we need to cover because uh, we uh, actually we had it in Xano way before confidential tokens and way before Zarkano, uh, and uh, it it has some use. But when we started to implement Zarkano and confidential to uh, confidential assets, we have so much work to do. We have like bare, like literally we re uh, need to rewrite every piece of code. And we, at some point we decided that as, as soon as we don't like don't see much activity on the escrow, you, people using escrow feature right now. So we uh, uh, like stop it for uh, for some period of time and now we are like we are working on returning it back uh, so the people could like use it on using the all new features of then so so at that very moment i need to say that this crow is not is not working in Xeno, but we will be bringing it back yeah, I think that uh, especially once we have uh, like private stable coins deployed on Sano, uh, it will gain a ton of popularity. Um, you know, it could be even implemented in the XMR Bazaar, you know, just as a other option, a decentralized option. Um, so yeah, I think it will be very popular once it comes back. How 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 would you see that potentially implement? I was thinking about too, they, they implemented an XMR Bazaar. How how would the what would the functionality yeah. be? Uh, yeah, the, the way it works is that um, both parties in the transaction deposit um, a fund. Um, you know, that fund basically ensures that both peers act honestly. And once the transaction is complete, in this case, um, I don't know, like buying a car or something, um, once the transaction is complete, the funds are. Um, are unlocked and yeah, that's it. And that's a way to do an escrow uh, without needing any kind of mailman or someone that, uh, you know, can be compromised in any way. Uh, it's just another option that I think will be really popular for, uh, especially for censorship resistant uh, marketplace. Yeah, no, um, I, got, I gotta I gotta learn more about that. And would there, would there be a way for, Obviously, so the transactions would have to take place uh, using using Xano itself, right? Or not necessarily. I think that uh, if I not if I not mistaken, these uh, contracts will work with all confidential assets. So oh, okay. you could use uh, a stablecoin, for example. Oh, and, and in the future, if Monero is able to be bridged over to Xano, which I think will happen, uh, you could use just a wrapped version of Monero as well. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. I, I gone bad. I will continue to, to talk to you about this topic. Uh, I'm yeah, sure we're sure. down at Monero Topia. I'll be talking to you about this. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I just threw up the the live stream of Copa Monero. The games have already begun there. I'll just kind of have this playing in the background just so to bring some attention to it. Right now, we have Chocador playing Exelix. 
Um, so I'll kind of keep that playing on the side. And once we end Monerotopia show today, the games will continue to go on. Uh, they're actually, they, they've really improved in terms of the quality. Uh, I think you guys saw when we streamed the first one at MoneroCon, it was, it was a little shaky. We've, they've, they've definitely improved quite a bit in terms of the quality of the stream uh, and the ability to kind of consistently keep it up. Although I was told it's super hot there today and they may lose electricity. They do have a generator back up. So we'll, we'll see how they do. Um, yeah, Formosa you, is hot. <laughs> Formosa is hot. Have you been? Have you been to... Uh, uh, no, to, never, to but Argentina. I would love to. I, I want to visit, yeah. <laughs> so, so many people in Argentina have never been to Formosa. <laughs> you know, it's like when I was t- <laughs> telling people in Buenos Aires about Monero Town and how I'm going to go there, they're like, wait a minute, wh- where? I was like, <laughs> like, Formosa. <laughs> like, nobody nobody goes to Formosa. Like, nobody mm. visits Formosa. <laughs> It's no, it's it's not very touristic. <laughs> it's definitely not a tourist destination, but uh, it's a beautiful place. It's beautiful to see that yeah, Monero sure. is organically gaining adoption there. Yeah, Gambat, any any thoughts on that? I mean, uh, you, I think are... it's amazing. I, I was actually yeah. talking to um uh well there there is a friend of mine on Twitter who wants to buy uh some terrains on Formosa. Uh, he was interested in in hiring a lawyer, and so I I, I looked up. And I found a lawyer that accepts uh, crypto. Um, I told him about. I convinced him to accept a Monero as well. Was was uh, this he, was this drunk drunk dial me? That was the, yes. Was, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's uh, he's. We're we're working with him on that. We're part of that little group there. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I talked to this lawyer in Mendoza, and I told him about Monero, and he actually knew about what what's going on in Formosa, and he's really excited about it, and so he's totally down to to work with us. And so that that would be great if that happened. Um, yes, I think that slowly to, you know, the, the movement is spreading across Argentina, and and, and yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah, originally we were going to try to move Monerotopia down to Argentina, and actually Zano team was down for it because we had consulted yeah. with them early on in, in in this decision. But we ended up pivoting back to Mexico for various reasons, which, which I'm glad we did because I don't think I would have been able to handle it. There's there's mm-hmm. no quick weekend trip down to Argentina to make sure things <laughs> are going okay, but I can run down. Yeah, I, I can get it. <laughs> but I am thinking... The next one, now that we have even more momentum and there's more momentum in uh, Formosa and in Buenos Aires with regards to crypto, I think maybe the next one. Um, did we, Did yeah, I read this? Uh, uh, AKN untipped, uh, $1.98. Thank you so much, man. I think that being able to confidentially prove you have purchased something is one of the most interesting things about Xano or being able to pass ownership from one person to another. It reduces the dependency on government's uh, title companies, etc. Yeah, that's that's a big breakthrough idea. So it's not just about money at this point. Obviously, Monero is focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's being untraceable digital cash and providing that utility and that utility alone. It really has no intent on doing things beyond that. Maybe at some point in the future, once its moneyness has been perfected, um, but really it doesn't want to risk sacrificing that in any way. Whereas Xano is kind of making different design decisions and it's allowing to do some of these creative things, uh, like we're saying, confidential assets, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of, uh, the, the powers and utility that it provides. So not, so beyond money itself, um, actually being able to, uh, token, tokenize the world privately. Um, so there's, there's tremendous amount of power there. I think we, I don't think anybody's even dreamt up of what that killer app will eventually be, right? It's just going to happen one day. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is, uh, go go ahead. ahead. (laughs) I just like to add that. Yeah, that's correct that you, you can, uh, you can pass the ownership of, uh, of an asset to, to another account, another person and. Uh, on the other side, it's very convenient. On the like, on the one side is uh, like it's bo- pose some risk on uh, an, on a single asset phase, for instance, is a very very big asset where there's a huge huge amount of coins and very well valuable. And for that reason, uh, we are uh, we are working on uh, this new mechanism that uh, asset. Could be controlled by like 
for instance ethereum uh, signature and this and this signature uh, could be uh, distributed among uh, several participants so no one like can be compromised and you like your assets at wouldn't be at risk in if if such case happens so yeah it will be even more possibilities and more more secure features to to some some interesting assets to be implemented on top of the of zano and with help of it yeah I, um, I think there's just great synergy between Sano and monero because uh well for for one thing we got uh you know look developing full membership proofs and uh, that will obviously have a great a good effect in sano and as well as sano doing all this research for confidential assets for sarcanum uh which you know maybe in the future monero wants to look into a uh, proof of stake but they don't want to lose confidential amounts well we did the research for that um and so you know i think that's you know helping each other um it, it, can, it we, can, can we talk about that real quickly uh andre andre it was at Monero Topia last year. He made the bold statement of saying, uh, and he's, he's repeated it since on interviews I've had with him, that he believes one day Monero will be proof of stake. Um, you know, I, some people almost fell out of their chair at Monero Topia when he said that. <laughs> particularly particularly uh, Francisco Cavanis, uh, one of the core devs who's, you know, a, a very firm believer in the power of proof of work to, uh, you know, one, one CPU, one vote, that it, it, it it's the best way to uh, hardened decentralization. Um, but I know uh, you guys, you guys see it a little differently. Curious, what, what is your take on that? And do you see a pathway towards that for Monero? Do you think that would ever happen in Monero and, and why? I'm not there yet. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not counting it out. You know, I'm. 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 I'm open to uh, listening. Whatever. Whatever the geniuses say. Like you know, if if, to, if tomorrow Luke Luke can convince me that you know it does make sense for certain reasons, and ultimately things become more decentralized, yeah. who am I to say otherwise? But uh, my my current my current understanding leads me to to still maintain uh, my my belief in proof of work as as the as the best method, but. Yeah, I think that it's just great that we have multiple options. Um, you know, um, I think that in the, in the end, all we want is uh, private digital cash and a nice way to use it. And so, you know, the more options, the better. Um, I personally think that uh, Monero has a problem with their security budget, which right now is around 20 million. I think it's too low. And if the Monero community wants to you know, maybe you raise it up a bit uh, without increasing emission. You know, one way to do it is to go the hybrid approach of proof of work and proof of stake. But it's wait, explain explain that to me for what you you're saying. Uh, the security budget on Monero is, is is too low. I mean, doesn't that inevitably go up? Like when, when I guess when yeah, the, when, when the, the price goes up, the, price uh, up. The, yep. the security budget goes up. But I mean, do we want to wait for that to happen? Um, you know, will someone attack Monero before it bumps uh, like 10x? You know, I think it's a fair concern. Um, but maybe we yeah. can get uh, maybe we can. I don't know if Body has comments on that or or anybody else. Maybe we could 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 open this up a little bit. Yeah, um, but I, I've been talking to some guys in the in the Monero community, and you know, they more or less agree. I mean, when, when I say to them, you know, that the budget is just around 20 million i mean they agree that it should be uh it should be higher and so how, how mm -hmm. do we raise it and, you know either pump the price or uh modify consensus you know so and and, and ex explain you know explain in the mo most noobish way possible how how a hybrid proof of work proof of stake helps solve that problem how does how does proof of stake add more secure more security to the network mm, in that scenario on this one well yeah I, I like i think i can explain how hybrid consensus that uh, used in xano may help and we believe it, it helped in such situation so it's not about layer like, like proof of stake alone because proof of stake is uh, like is technology an approach and technology that is a long history and it has its own uh, disadvantages and advantages and uh, 
like maybe more disadvantages but this this is why uh Zana Don doesn't use proof of stake alone and that is why we have a hybrid consensus because like we need to to get the best from both worlds and also because uh this um require from a potential attacker to also acquire not only proof of work uh, power that like could be could be rented for instance but also proof of stake power so coins and this this makes it like more difficult and it was a decision that uh, was made by cryptozoiberg a few years back because we uh, now we are not not very big project and back in the year back in the days we were even smaller and for small project it's very important maybe it's not not very important for monero of it, its current state and scale but for a small project it's extremely important because if you are poor proof work you are at a very big risk because uh, someone someone big <laughs> big like guy could come up and just uh, make you make you a consensus disaster so yeah we we have this approach that that you if you need if you would like to like to double spend you need to to pay for proof of work and proof of stake uh, powers uh, at the same time so this is like it's it's double difficult yeah i, yeah. I don't think there is there is many more uh like just a hundred percent proof of work networks, um, you know, small ones, because they just get attacked all the time, and so they necessarily have to implement something like master nodes uh, or something. And I think the Zeno approach is the most sane one. Uh, it preserves decentralization and censorship resistance, and, and yeah, it's just you know something we are constantly improving. And if the Monero community ever wants to look at it, and um, they have it. I, mean, I think that's just great and a great option to have. God, yeah, that you. Maybe. Yeah, go actually, we, we we're very happy that we had we had co that co authored the Zerkanum paper and worked with me on this paper. It was an invaluable uh, work from from him. So we are really grateful for. And yeah, so yeah, for sure. If 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 someday if someday Monero decided. To like to look more closely at proof of stake, that at least uh, uh, you have one very very talented person who are fully capable. Yeah, of I mean, yeah, like I said, that was one of the my, one of the things that opened my eyes up to Zano too. Is right to see Co going to going to contribute to Zano. I was like, oh, okay. If if Co if Co is is willing to partake in what you guys are are, are working on and building, then there, there must be something interesting there. And uh, obviously, he he must believe in the concept somewhat, right? If he if he built the technology that allows for private proof of stake. Uh, maybe maybe we will. We had a panel on it last year. I'd like to have some kind of discussion around it this year for sure, especially zo zoned in on the topic of will Monero one day uh, be a uh, hybrid proof of work, proof of stake? Well, so and and and, and is the long run vision of Xano to ultimately become proof of stake only? Well, it's uh, it's difficult, uh, like it's a tough question because of like from some some perspective, yeah, it would be nice, but at the, right at the moment we don't we don't see how this could be done what right now. So we we need to keep this hybrid consensus because of its security properties that I mentioned. But maybe someday we will find out how to do it. Maybe it. Uh, some like uh, other other project in the industry uh, come up with some ideas. Maybe some paper will appear that every year you you know yet very interesting work appear. So you can you can see how all things are pushing forward. Uh, and yeah, so we believe that at some point uh, all the issues with uh, proof of stake only approach. Uh, will be solved and uh, we uh, we will switch to it uh, probably 
Fantastic. Deegan Cash tipped a dollar. Random Max is strong, but XMR hash power isn't unassailable at the moment. It's possible that a proof of work slash proof of stake hybrid could be stronger. Nevertheless, without a clear, compelling real world reason to change, the rudder is set on one CPU, one vote for the meantime. Uh, that's a good way of summarizing it. Yeah. So uh, we're, Monero is currently full steam ahead on one CPU, one vote. It's it's yeah, work, yeah. We're, it's working for Monero. Uh, we we got Bitmain sponsoring Monero Topia, looking to go build <laughs> Monero miners and uh, greatly increase the the potentially increasing the hashing power of Monero. Uh, they must be banking on something, right? If they're interested in Monero, um, they're thinking there'll be more mining happening on the on the Monero uh, blockchain. So there's certainly something to be said for it. Yeah, yeah, as he said, um, until, you know, a real war factor forces this, um, you know, I doubt the Monero community will look into it. But, you know, for now, uh, we're just hoping that the government doesn't attack it uh, mm -hmm. before the price pumps, you know, so that's why I think right. as a Monero community member as well, you know, I love Monero. Right, right. And like you guys said, and in, 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 in some ways we'll be ready for it because of the work that Zano is doing. Exactly. Right. And the decision could be made at that time yes. to switch over. Yeah, uh, that's this, a great synergy we have. Exactly. This comment, I'm not sure I totally get. Maybe it was something referenced to we had said because we're talking about NIM. Wouldn't using NIM MixNet cause those packets transactions to be distinguished since not everyone would be using it? That was an older account. Did we did we mention NIM? Were you guys talking about NIM at some point? Uh, maybe they were talking about the chain analysis video, uh, because they can use. Like I guess, oh, no, 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 Mixnet no. or Tor is a way to to bypass. Um, you know, the oh, it was the reference to okay to that. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah, hey, guys. Any anything you want to get out right now with regards to Zana? Why have you guys up here? Um, yeah, we're just lo looking forward for the Monerotopia, and we, I'm sure we got we have um, lots of interesting discussions. Uh, yeah, I'm look, so looking forward to it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, I just I'm just glad that you know, talented people from all these projects, you know, just can just come together in a space and, and discuss because, uh, you know, when I was last year there, uh, Ball told me that, and you know, he was struggling with. Uh, with confidential assets and then when he came to the conference he realized that uh other projects were facing the same issues as well <laughs> and so oh okay you know, yeah. that's that's an interesting uh thing to happen <laughs> yeah that's it uh, it would be really nice to, to see to see uh, lots of people here at the conference live and uh have uh, have an opportunity to talk to them so yeah, I, I'm really excited about the Monerotopia because last year it was really wonderful experience to me. Uh, it was like not my first time in Mexico, but maybe like first time when I really uh, went uh, into like to some uh, to to event and I spent some time uh, talking to people and like feeling the vibes and uh, atmosphere. It, it was real nice and yeah i have a very very nice feeling about the upcoming manner topic so yeah good luck with that it was awesome man yeah we're once again thank you guys for participating again this year um very excited about it you guys you guys add a ton of value to to the conference and to the ecosystem so uh greatly appreciate you guys participating um anybody want to come up and ask a question we got a bunch of people well, we got some people in the backstage maybe we could ask like one or two while we have zano up here i don't know if um let me bring body up i don't i don't know if he's I, I'll, I'll just throw him up here and i guess he could unmute himself if he wants to talk um uh, tux you got anything you want to put out there with regards to zano any questions uh no not at the moment it's been a really cool conversation to listen to and i've definitely learned a lot more about zano maybe more interested anybody else to to bring up uh i'll bring up alaska but this can turn this can turn into uh, uh, <laughs> i'm gonna jump into viewers on stage first just gonna turn it to viewers on stage here we go but if, if he's got a question i want him to be able to answer it 
I mean, as echo isn't bad because of the fresh construction here, but um, I did want to point out to a previous comment about the real world threat to Monero's security budget. I was actually typing up a a, a comment <laughs> about it, but the annual budget, not including all of like the emergency spending for Ukraine or whatever, last year for the war pigs in the U.S. alone was nine hundred billion dollars. And nine hundred billion dollars is three hundred times the entire market cap of XMR. That means in a single day, the 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 government transaction volume on murdering people halfway around the world is as such that you could afford to make an attack on Monero's existing security concerns. Um, there is actually already a reason to switch to a hybrid approach. And if people think, why would they target Monero? I mean, look what they did to Libya when there was a threat to the dollar dominance. Look what they did to Iraq and Iran when there was a threat to dollar dominance. We would be fools not to expect the war pigs to go after the biggest threat to their Achilles heel, which is their crippled financial system. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and so do you want to explain how the low market cap of Monero as it is right now is a threat to its, its the viability of its security when you're talking, you know, fiat on and off ramps are still a serious issue with Monero right now? Um, yeah, I think that, uh, so, so, so you mean like how will the, the market cap affect the security of Monero? Um, yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize, um, even though price in the sense of trying to move the circular economy forward is not that big of a deal. Price is a very, very, very big deal when it comes to the security of a cryptocurrency. It's right. in fact, it's, and the other thing is, is even though Monero is highly resilient to political attacks, AMD isn't, Intel isn't, right? So the very people who are making the best hardware for mining Monero are, I mean, I mean, they are government slaves that like they, they can't even exist without nation state financial backing and they can't produce these microchips without fabs that are highly regulated and back doors and all of that stuff. Um, I don't think people understand how important this idea of building secure node hardware and then secure mining hardware and all of this stuff. And I don't think people understand like Bitmain is not your enemy. Bitmain may well end up being one of the most important allies that we have in the crypto sphere. Mm -hmm if they can push hardware that is, I mean, I don't know if they are or not, we'll find out at Monerotopia, but if we had secure mining hardware that could compete with these state controlled entities, we could push the price of attacking Monero's security based entirely on fiat, having such a handle on the existing economy. I mean, all of these things come together, right? Our mining hardware bleeds into politics, bleeds into the incentive for attacking Monero, bleeds into the need for a, either a high price or a hybrid mining system and so on. Um, you cannot look at any of these things in isolation. Proof of work miner tipped 50 cents. I second AK Anon. Uh, regardless of proof of work versus proof of stake, Monero is very vulnerable at the moment, especially that it's very easy for anyone with resources to rent AWS for a short period. Now, people need to understand Monero has solved a huge chunk of the threat model. We are not talking about just anybody. In fact, we're not even talking about just any country. It's not like some, you know, 
rural African dictatorship or whatever is going to muster up the, the resources to make an attack on Monero's mining ecosystem. But we're talking about the people that it threatens are simultaneously the very same people who would have the ability to make such an attack. But one of the reasons why I'm less threatened by it than a lot of people who are considering this, who are in the know, is it also exposes the very people who do it. It would be nearly impossible to hide the fact that you are the guilty party if you were to make such an attack. Yeah, so there's there's two things going on at the same time, which is the mask is completely off for who is threatened by it. But I'd also point out the mask is already off for who is threatened by Monero. We know exactly who is threatened by Monero. So this is an attack that becomes more likely by the day. And yeah, like you said in the past too, all right, it's, it's kind of akin to Tor. Um, they see value in this tool as well. There's there's those that you would think would want to attack Monero, but that also see value in a network where they can transact privately. Uh, if cash no longer exists, they're going to need a way to to basically transport their their briefcase of cash so they can make, make their payoffs behind the scenes. They're going to need something like Monero, so... There's that aspect too, right? Yeah, and, and what goes along with that, at the risk of giving the battle strategy to our enemies, <laughs> right now, you have Xano and Monero people like working out the details of how we can work together. And this has been going on since Doug's therapy session in Mexico a year ago, right? <laughs> like, this, But the, it, so you could think of it like Team Fiat and Team Freedom, right? Whoever unites first wins. That's the bottom line. Because what is keeping us alive is the fact that they don't trust each other. What is keeping us alive right now is the fact that they have to have a place to hide their hooker money, right? Like they have to have a way to protect themselves from each other. So there, there is this powerful incentive to leave us alone. But we're no longer fighting over the minds of the majority. The masses are already too far gone. Um, we had a, a conversation last week at the end of Monerotopia about how, and honestly, Body had, I, I hope somebody has that recorded, but Body had some really incredible things to say about this thesis that I've been proposing that there's this massive gap forming right now between the technologically competent and the regular individual and they're getting so far behind that they are becoming irrelevant, which is a sad state of affairs because these people might otherwise be incredibly gifted and talented people. Well, on the flip side of that, absolute power is now falling further and further in the hands of people who nobody really knows who they are anymore. Like, I mean, look at Sawi, right? I mean, he's probably just a normal guy when you go and meet him or whatever. But this dude is working on like incredibly revolutionary technology that may have a huge impact on the way that contracts are done in the future or the way that house deeds are swapped in the future, right? I mean, Gonbat has been keeping up on the fact that just the way that you buy land in Argentina may be subject to change in weeks, Right. Like, and the, I mean, these are just normal dudes. This is not being worked out in the King's court anymore. This is being worked out with casual conversations over the internet that the, the, the battle space has changed so much. And that's one of the reasons why we need to be mindful of the fact that uh, we've got cornered animals holding on to their vestiges of power. And they have every reason to come together just to kill these projects. But that also ironically means it's not like the code base disappears. It's not like we can't fire up a new Monero that has proof of stake built in in months, right? They can't kill it forever, even with these kinds of attacks. And the thing is, is they have to spend so much more of their treasure than we spend of ours that it's still... And it, like, it's still not clear who the victor is here. So there's a saying that war is not about winning. It's about making the enemy lose more. 
And I believe that wholeheartedly. Once the war has begun, your focus is to make sure that your enemy is exhausting more of what they have than you are. An attack that we've been talking about on you know, the security budget and how much effort you would have to put into uh, proof of work in order to compromise Monero's blockchain, these people are diverting absolutely mind-boggling amounts of resources to make this happen, right? And, and then we also know who did it and why, right? So, and then all of those of us who hold XMR, I mean, you could even probably figure out how much you're supposed to have or whatever. It's not like we all just completely go under. You just fire up a new blockchain and get started all over again, right? So they don't actually win by making this attack, but it would be highly disruptive. And these yeah, are the yeah, considerations sure. that we have to make when we're trying to decide how to proceed and how to mitigate these risks. Yeah, any attack on, on these projects just uh, make them stronger, you know, like with full membership proofs. And, you know, if this attack ever happens, I'm sure the, the Monero community would hard fork and improve consensus. Uh, you know, it's, I think that's why they don't do it, because they know it, it will be fruitless. Or maybe they're just, but... um, you know. <laughs> Let me just chime in real quick. Uh, so those just kind of people just kind of tuning in. We we got Zano live, the Zano team, some members from the Zano team that are live. Uh, Val, who's the, who's the, who runs up research for for Zano, and Gamba Fire, who's basically the the community organizer for Zano, um, getting the word out on Zano. Um, and we have also, Copa Monero in the background, and you yeah, we're also donate simultaneously playing this is live guys it's happening right now streaming at the same time as monero topia it's a copa monero match happening in monero town in formosa province this is not these aren't these aren't actors these are these are real people uh that are playing their hearts out to try to win a monero prize there's 12 I, different local i teams don't know if you guys hitting. saw that block by the way did you see that incredible <laughs> block early it was amazing. there's some really uh it's it's actually enjoyable now to watch copa monero now that we've uh you know that uh, they've done a, like a, a good job fixing up uh the, the streaming it's actually not bad watching it. it's really exciting um yes I, i'm just blown away by the fact that it, that it's real Right. I mean, every single kid on that field there that's playing knows about Monero and is trying to win Monero right now. Uh, yeah, you know, their, their, their families all know about Monero. Every single person that lives in that town, that village in Formosa knows about Monero, has heard about Monero. I mean, because this this tournament has been taking place at their 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 soccer stadium, which is like the, it's the, it's the main point in the town. It, it, it is like the, it is the, it is the meeting place. It's kind of like the, the, the central square there. Everybody goes to the soccer stadium at one point or another to watch a game. It's their main form of entertainment there. Um, yeah. So uh, it's, it's, I, it's a big deal. Like, it's not like they just heard about it. I mean, they use it and they understand it. They understand why it's important mm -hmm. uh, and why it makes sense. It just makes sense to them. To us exactly you know, it makes sense exactly exactly so i just wanted to get yeah, we'll, we'll continue to play that uh zana we'll, we'll we'll let you guys move on uh you're welcome to stay on board i'm sure the show will go on for at least another hour as we do you mind if i ask them one more question please of, sure. course. of course so this concept of dark five merge mining with monero have you guys looked into this and do you have any opinions on this? Very good. And yeah, what very do you good think question. the effect of having multiple uh, smart contract uh, ecosystems, some of them improving the security budget of Monero? Um, so, and I mean, the, the other thing is the projects look to be achieving different things in different ways. And, you know, and it's very desirable, I think, to have two. But or actually, there's three, but or three good ones that I know of. Um, but what what is your opinions on their strategy for instead of in, instilling the proof of work, their uh, their their merge mining in order to gain some of the security benefits of the existing blockchain? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not very familiar with these topics, so I'm not have much to say unfortunately gonzalo maybe you uh i yeah i asked the team uh, a while ago uh, to look into random x but unfortunately it seems like it's not really compatible uh with what we're doing but um 
but yeah, I think I, I'm not sure how much mining works, honestly. Uh, like I'm not sure if it has been implemented yet. Has someone implemented? Because they have been talking about uh, implemented, but you know, on practice, I don't quite picture how it works. Um, well, we know it's done with other cryptos, right? Like Dogecoin could be merged mined with Litecoin, right? I mean, I think that's that's happening in 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 yeah, what's real. Um, yeah, we'll have to look. Yeah, Tari has has from day one said they would be merge mined with Monero. Dark Five recently came out saying that they're they're launching to be merge mined with Monero. Um, obviously, I mean, the, the, in theory, it would be fantastic, right? Uh, you know, because then b both networks end up with more hashing power. Yeah, I just like in the case of Tari, for example, I don't get why wouldn't. Uh... You know, Monero miners just attack Terry as well. You know, um, I don't know. I, I don't quite get it. Um, maybe we can look into it a bit more later. Uh, but yeah, for for now, Random X is not in the plans of Sano. Kevin Tip, twenty five cents, fifty one percent attack in XMR won't compromise the whole network. It may just hold up the transactions. Yeah, yeah. Um, an attacker can basically just uh, mine empty blocks. And that will halt the modern network uh, until we have fork and do something about it. We got Florida over here who's who's complaining that we're we're streaming uh, Copa Monero at the same time. I'm sorry, man. Uh, not your show, bro. <laughs> and you, you should be a little you should be a little bit more supportive of Copa Monero. We're not just playing. Please don't force us to watch. This isn't just a soccer game, man. This isn't. FIFA. This is a Monero-based soccer tournament that's happening from. I think the least we can do is give it a little attention. You know, just yeah. But bear, bear with this, Florida. You don't, you don't have to watch. You can close your eyes. You can close your eyes. Will the Zano team <laughs> play today as well? Zano team is playing right after this. Yeah, Zano's oh, playing oh, right that's after. Nice. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't have it time that that beautifully. I apologize. <laughs> uh, it would have it made more sense. Uh, the amount of coordination that goes into I don't know how we exist and how we're doing all this to be honest, guys. Yeah, <laughs> is that on a uh, is that on a different display? Because if it is, you could full screen it so it like shows up larger. Yeah, because then but then so wait, if I full screen here, oh, that's nice. Right, so yeah, better. that's what he was hoping. It's a lot better, right? Yeah, yeah it's way better. Okay, I got you. I had it. I had it. Um. All right, Zano. Yeah, we'll we're, we'll we'll go ahead and move on. Otherwise, we'll never get through the show. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Super excited to be hanging out with you guys down in Mexico in November. Yeah, um, appreciate forward. your invitation. Yeah, it was was nice to be here. Yeah, thank you, Douglas. And thank you, Texado. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Thanks. Good to hear what you guys had to talk about with Zano, and excited for the project, and excited for it coming to Cake Wallet. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, very yeah, excited sure. about that. Hopefully yeah, yeah. we'll we see Everyone that is asking about it. <laughs> we have some comments coming in from Xano Project itself. Andre is the person to ask about network security. He is Prague Proof of Work Z was superior in many ways to rent. Oh, uh, he said Prague Pow Z was superior to Random X. I don't know. Okay. If, I don't know if we want to go. I don't know if we want to start going down that road, <laughs> uh, guys. If you if you want to hear that question answered, come down to Monerotopia. We'll be talking about it live. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, we'll be talking about merge mining. I think I think we could have some good conversations about that. Gombat is bringing up some good points. Uh, like you know, a lot of it's kind of theoretical. We haven't really seen it done in practice, at least in Monero yet, right? Uh, we know mm -hmm. that there's those. Uh, saying that they're going to launch with merge mining with Monero, but we haven't seen it actually done in practice yet. Yeah, uh, there's, might this be... project, uh, there's this project, uh, what's it called? Dome Forge, I think. Uh, they said yes. like a Monero fork. Uh, yeah. They were going to do it, and then they realized uh, they would have like some big security implications, and so they uh, like went back uh, with it and go, went the proof-of-stake route. So that's something interesting to look at. All right, um, guys, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on, everybody. Uh, well, I can't say everybody. I can't speak for everybody, but I think a lot of people are very excited about Xano and the collaborations we're seeing, and they're definitely excited about the price. Those that that picked up some Xano because we've you know been talking about it for a while now on this show. 
Uh, so those that that got in early, I think, are excited to watch watch the price go up. So there's that element too. Um, thank you so much, guys. Thank we you. We will uh, see you in November in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. sure. For sure. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Gambat, thank, thank you. you, Val. Thank you so much, man.